Hey folks, dude here, talking to you today about, of all things, today's knife blog is going to be the KCB-70. This is a very cool piece of equipment, which was actually, well, designed and fielded to be, well, it's kind of funny because they said KCB, which is basically knife, cable cutter, or cutter B for bayonet in 1970 for the year, which was designed and, well, actually produced. Now the thing about it is it was actually designed and actually made to be a piece of equipment that could be attached to the Stoner 63 submachine gun. You know, it's jokingly to call that thing basically a squad automatic weapon. It really is a squirt and bump gun, but it's an awesome piece of equipment. The SEALs really got good use out of it. Very modular, very cool piece of kit. Now essentially this thing was actually made by coordination of two companies. Uh, a company called NWM, which is, let me try to get the thing from Dutch here, Nederlands Wappen and Munity Fabrik. And uh, they designed it under the Post-70 Soldier Program. <clears throat> was intention to, you know, give soldiers better equipment, and of course it had to be something that fit the Stoner 63, the XM-23 carbine, and the XM-207 machine gun. And of course the other cool thing about it is, of course, this fits all M16s, AR-15s, AR-180s, um, Usually it'll fit anything that fits a Stenag slash NATO <clears throat> configuration bayonet system is what this thing will actually fit. Now in terms of what it actually is, it's your standard, well, nothing crazy bayonet, has a slight upturn on a buoy style point, and uh, the kicker is, I'm trying to get myself a field of view here, the kicker is essentially this thing is designed to be something that which it kind of is like all things to all people. It does actually have saw teeth. So it's kind of kind of cool in that one. It's actually very much, very much like the M9 bayonet. Uh, it does actually have a cutout for it to be accepted upon and utilized as a wire cutter. Basically, you put the wire in a little slot there. Pull, pull, pull. Cut, cut, cut. Is it the best wire cutter around? No, but it's something that is on your person. Standard lug type arrangement basically fits over the barrel of the weapon system of course you have a standard little catch type guy in the back nothing crazy there now this one is actually kind of cool because they actually are trying to make this thing fit for all things and all reasons and of course you guys can see let me kind of play with my focus here hopefully you guys can kind of see you do see hopefully the little icorn squirrel right there and there's two configurations in this squirrel one squirrel has the oval underneath that says icorn and the other one does not Basically, it's just, you know, which vintage of this is it going to be? The actual size of this, I'm going to have to give it to you guys in, uh, you know, millimeters and break it off and, you know, do it probably like a conversion. You guys could do it online. Overall length is 305 millimeters. Blade length is 175 millimeters. Blade width is 30 millimeters. Blade thickness is 3.5 millimeters. Number of saw teeth, 49 Muzzle ring diameter is your standard Stenag, NATO, nothing crazy. Everything fits on the M16 configuration, 22 millimeters. Now, the cool thing about this one was, is they tried, like I said, they tried to make this thing fit in all types of situations. Uh, blade design is pretty basic. It's actually pretty good steel. Uh, it's a little thin, actually, to be a bayonet. Uh, everybody tried to do this, you know, wire cutter thing. Like, you know, the Brits had the L85 set up. The, uh, the Russians had the, uh, what was it, the, well, on the AK variants, basically it's the same deal, pretty much just, you know, fits in the scabbard, the scabbard becomes the handle, this becomes the cutter, and it cuts stuff. Now, there is actually kind of a kind of little cool thing on this. You guys will see, and hopefully it kind of shows better, but there's this little cut here where you basically see, like, you know, pretty much like a little box. Cord you know, accordingly, there's also a little hole. Now, the cool part about this thing was, is they were trying to make this thing fit in all types of situations for something kind of cool. Now, you would need to have a round of 5.56 five, to make this work in the field. I, I don't know where you're going to hold a round of ammo in, you know, combat, but essentially the way this works is you flip your knife thusly. Of course, don't cut yourself on the edge. Take your round, push in, and that little box, that little box comes off. Now, the cool part about it was this was actually engineered to have a hole. Hopefully, you guys are kind of seeing that. There was a hole going down inside the length of the handle in which to hold a sight adjustment tool. So, it's actually kind of good thinking if you think about it. And, uh, of course, it would be placed into the handle. Uh, hang on one second here. It's, this, is, this is really, really new. I mean, I, I really have never fielded this thing. And I think it's pretty much just absolutely cherry. But essentially, the, the sight adjustment tool goes inside there, 
And this little guy holds him in place. And of course, you know, all the good stuff like that there. Now, accordingly, it actually does have kind of some really not great ergonomic type stuff. I mean, the handle is pretty much kind of very much, it's not good German, you know, Eastern European, you know, execution. I mean, it's just kind of slippery, not even rubbery. I mean, you can get a pretty good grasp on it, but the ergonomics are right up there with my Spetsnaz Bichetti in terms of ergonomics. It really does not feel good. Now, most people would probably be tempted to do the classic never do it with a bayonet thing and go like this. Okay, guys, let me tell you why you never do this with a bayonet ever. Very simply put, if dude comes over and decides he's going to risk getting cut, all he has to do is take this, he has leverage, your finger, your thumb, whatever appendage that you stuck through there is broken, and he had an ass load of leverage in which to do it. Or he gets really, really evil about it, and he proceeds to just simply just go, okay, let's really have fun here. He's wearing, hopefully, heavy gloves in the process, grabs it wrong way, and just proceeds to over torque, you're done. Don't ever stick your finger in the accepting component of a bayonet. Unless you really, really want to get hacked up or broken, or, you know, it's just not going to work out for you. Also, case in point, they really don't do a lot of training with bayonets. Anyway, uh, by and large, in basic training for the Marine Corps and also in the Army, you will only get basic, very basic bayonet instruction, and that's going to be all you ever get for the period in which your military service comprises bayonet to bayonet, or bayonet to anybody fighting. Sticking a knife on the end of your gun is really not the best way to fight. Having a bayonet as an all-purpose well, camp knife really is not the best thing either, because this is a compromise. You're given a big window of opportunity for stuff to break. You put teeth on the back. That's another opportunity for stuff to to break. There's a lot of stuff you don't do to a knife blade. Number one, you do not put a hole in it. Number two, you do not put notches on it. Yes, jimping looks really, really cool, but if you torque the blade, that gives some place for a crack to start, and it just goes and migrates right on through, and it snaps your blade in half. Now, in terms of the actual execution of this thing, the acceptance of this, it is pretty much a collector piece. Nobody really fielded with it, Nobody really did much with it, and it now is kind of more of a curiosity slash minor collector piece rather than anything. The KCB-70 is around. It's not a hugely valuable knife, but it's still not a very cheap knife. Uh, usual copies of this tend to run sub-$100, more than 50 bucks. If you wish to have one in your collection, yes, they're kind of cool. Yes, it will fit on your M16, AR-15, AR-180, and of course, any other NATO stat slash SNAG system, it will fit on there, and it will do bayonet-type duties. Would I ever actually hang a knife on the end of my gun? No, I would simply just have a better knife. On that one, folks, I'm going to break off and, uh, you know, let you guys figure it out. But this one is, of course, this episode of Knife Blog and the KCB-70. I commend it to you. I'll go break up on those for folks. Eat, go keep it in the sun ring as always, always. You know what? You love it. Knife blog goodness. Mm. See you guys. Urgh!